Hey, we have on the board another integral from MIT Integration B 2019. This is problem number 16. We've got the integral from pi over 2 to 0 of sine over x, sine of x over sine x plus pi over 4. This is actually an integral that can be done really quickly um, with a few tricks. So let's go over that. What I want to start with is let's look at this denominator. We have a problem with the angle um, being different than what we have in the numerator. So let's see what we can do to simplify that. What I'm going to do is use this formula, and I think it's going to allow us to simplify the denominator pretty nicely. So for our, we'll just rewrite our sine of x plus pi over 4 as, so our a value is x and our b value is pi over 4. So we're going to have sine x cosine pi over 4 plus sine pi over 4 cosine x. The nice thing about this is for cosine pi over 4 and sine pi over 4, it's the same value. This is actually square root of 2 over square root of 2. And then let's just, a little bit of simplification. So that means we're going to have a square root of 2 over 2 that we can factor out of each of these. And so we can have, we can rewrite this as square root of 2 over 2 sine x plus cosine x. So what I'm going to do is plug this back into the integral, but we can pull this constant part out front and put it here just uh, as a reciprocal. Okay, so now we've rewritten this, and you notice we have the same angle on, on all of our sine and cosine terms. And the key thing here is to notice this is in exactly the format that we use for what's called the King's Principle, King's Rule, or King's... I've heard this as King's Principle, King's Rule, or King's Property. So there's always a King in it, so let's use that now. So with the King's Principle, we're going to make a substitution of u equals b plus a minus x, where b is the doesn't matter the order but b is this uh, limit of the integral and a is this inter this limit so let's just see how this is going to work so our u we're going to say is pi over 2 plus 0 but that's just pi over 2 minus x and then we can actually rewrite this in terms of x so we can say that x equals pi over 2 minus u and then therefore we're just integrating both sides dx is going to be minus du so of course everything has to be just right for this really to work out nicely where like you'll see pi over 2 minus x is actually the complementary angle formula for trig functions so we have like a lot of things that we need in place here so let's make this substitution and see how it works out first let's update our boundaries on the integration so if we plug our pi over 2 in here for x u is going to be 0 and we plug a 0 in here we're going to get pi over 2 back there then sine of x is going to be Plugging in our x values, it's going to be sine of pi over 2 minus u. Then again, same thing here, sine of pi over 2 minus u uh, plus cosine pi over 2 minus u. And notice our du is going to have a minus sign on it. And then we'll just use this minus sign to flip the boundaries of integration. So we'll rewrite this 2 square root of 2 pi over 2 to 0. When we write this, we can we can use the complementary angle formula for sine and cosine. So I have the complementary angle formula over here to the right. So starting with sine pi over 2 minus u, but that's just going to be cosine of u using the first formula. And then we'll use it again here. So this is going to be cosine of u. And then cosine of pi minus, so using our second formula, this piece is going to be just sine of u. And then the thing you notice now is if you just flip this order here and you change the variable from u to x, you have the exact same, you have the exact same denominator that you have here. And then you have sine x, and this is going to be a cosine x. So let's just rewrite this in terms of x real quick. So now we've rewritten this in terms of x. We can do this because it's a definite integral and we can use any variable we want once we have a definite integral. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the board, but I'm going to just add this first integral to this integral here, and let's see what happens then. So now I've just added these two integrals together. We know that these are equal because we manipulated, we started with this one and we manipulated into this form. So we can't just add them together, but we can if we put a two in front here, i being the original integral, like we'll say this is i. So we've made two copies of it. We just have to keep track of that so we're not just doubling the integral arbitrarily. And then finally, let's when we add these together, we've got the same limits of integration, we've got the same constant in front, so we can actually put those things up front and just add the inner terms together. And at that point, we get the simplification that we really want, because we can just cancel this, this whole thing, and the integral is just one. And so now we're integrating one, so we're gonna have 
2 square root of 2. Integral of 1 is x evaluated from pi over 2 to 0. And this is just going to be 2 square root of 2. And we're going to have, when we, we plug our limits in, we're going to have pi over 2 minus 0. And so 0 is just 0. 2 is cancel. And we're left with pi over square root of 2. But we have to remember that we made, we doubled up our integral, so we have to divide by 2. To, and so dividing this piece by 2 for our final answer, we're going to have pi over 2 square root of 2. So essentially what you can do is when you, when you see this familiar form, and there's a few different forms like this, you can kind of just jump to 2i equals pi over 2 to 0 of 1 dx. So once you see that the integral is just going to become 1, you can just go, you know the integral of 1 is just x, and so this is going to be pi over 2 minus 0 divided by 2, because we have our 2 there. And so this thing is going to be always be pi over 4. So you can kind of look at it almost like a formula when you see this, and you can just plug in pi over 4. Again, there's some different variations. Sometimes it doesn't work, but basically that's how you cut a lot of time in this kind of problem. Okay, that was MIT Integration B 2019, problem number 16. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and have a good day.